Olympic settings make it make make it okay. Now, when it comes to parties and other kinds of settings, right? Things get a lot more complicated. I will tell you what I have. It's not fiqh. It's not fiqh. Is what it, what uh, restrictions I impose on my own family. So this is not sharia. This is not a fatwa. This is not. This is just how Brother Naman lives in his life. That's it. So and if it's if you like it, you can keep it. If not, it's there's no sin on you for not doing what I'm doing because that's just the lifestyle I've chosen for myself. Okay. In the lifestyle I've, I've chosen for myself. When we have guests come over or we have a party, then the sisters are to themselves and the brothers are to themselves. And even if the sisters are my students, because a lot of times they are and I know them, I try not to say salam to them. I try not to talk to them. I just stay among the brothers, completely. And we just, we're as separate as we can be, okay? And if there's food that needs to be passed down or up in my case, which it does, then I have the children do that or I come halfway up the stairs and my wife meets me halfway and we, we operate like that. That's our modus operandum inside the house when there are guests over. That's how we do things. If there's a friend that I have that comes over, he will never ever 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 see my wife. Not even in hijab. Not even completely covered. He won't know she exists. She, he will be in the living room. He will be in my office. He'll be somewhere else. I will have them go away and then we'll do our talking or whatever. He might hear her because she's cooking and saying, Daman, why aren't you taking the food yet? Or something. He might hear her, but he'll never see her. It's a thing. There may be cases where they're, we're in the same room, but we're far apart because of space issues or something like that. That's acceptable to some extent. But there's absolutely no direct interaction with guests and things like that. I, I don't like it. She doesn't like it. We're okay. We're, we're on the same. Actually, she's more hardcore than I am. So, you know. We're, we're good on that side. When it comes to going to other people's homes, we tend not to go to people's homes that don't have these kinds of restrictions. We just tend not to. Because we're uncomfortable with that setting. And it's not about, we don't think it's haram, or your people going to hell, I'm not going to your house. I don't think like that. I just, I'm not comfortable with that setting, so I don't want to put my family in that situation. That's all it is. Simple as that. Okay. So that's, that's a little bit about just how interaction happens inside the house. Now, I know, well, that's a lot of announcements, okay. Uh, so, uh, the, the, what was I talking about? Just guidelines for our own family, right? Guidelines for our own family. And the same thing with, as the girls grow older, as the girls grow older, we're gonna have to devise rules as they get older. But there are certain rules we have in the house that are based on the ayat of Surah An-Nur. They're not perfectly followed because they're still learning. But we're trying to implement them. Like for example, during the day, during the afternoon, if there's a Saturday, Sunday, weekend or whatever, the kids during the day, until the sun is up, they're actually not allowed to walk into the bedroom. They're not allowed to just walk into the bedroom. And technically the bedroom door shouldn't be open. It should actually, it's better that they're closed. And they should knock before they come in. ثَلَاثُ عَوْرَاتٍ لَكُمْ We'll see that later on in Qur'an, in Surah An-Nur one day inshaAllah. There are three hours that are for you that children should not be coming into your room. You know how in, in Western families, children just walk into the bedroom and just lie down in the bed? They do that, right? That's not how things are supposed to be. Now if there's a small child and they're sleeping in your bed, that's something else. But we're talking about as kids get a little bit older. When they start getting, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that, that age, then they absolutely have to knock before they come into the room. You can't expect your one-year-old to knock. Okay? If you, if you expect your one-year-old to knock, then you'll have a lot of cleaning of the carpet to do later. So, <laughs> yeah. So you don't want to be in that stinky situation, so you don't do that. But, but you know, to, to set some restrictions on the kids, on when they can come into certain parts of the house, especially the bedroom, especially that, right? Uh, and, and these little rules, they go a long way in protecting the dignity of a family. A long, long way. The other thing also is, my wife does not pick up my phone, I don't pick up her phone. You know how sometimes your phone, your wife's phone is next to you? And somebody's calling, I could just pick up and say, hello, yeah, she's here, hold on. Nah. Look, okay, maybe it's happened once in a while, but I, as, a, as a rule, we don't, don't do it. It's okay, voicemail's okay. Nobody needs to hear my voice. And I don't need to hear anybody's voice. And nobody needs to hear the, the wife's voice, you know, talk on the phone or whatever, hold on, I'll get him for you. No need. Unnecessary. It's not, we don't call it haram, we just say precautionary. 
we just we're not we don't like it we're not comfortable with it so these are restrictions that you're supposed to abide by now for example in my office on campus you have sisters that that are my employees i have certain employees that are sisters i have students that are sisters and sometimes i have to give one employee an instruction and they're in my office the door has to be left wide open she has to be in a chair not across from me on the side of me and the chairs are purposely not across from me they're on the side of me so I can keep doing my work and she's doing her work but we're not looking at each other the whole time it's not appropriate it's not a good thing right and the, the, you have to leave the door wide not even a little bit open leave it wide open leave it wide open okay and that's, that's how it's supposed to be and it's better if you have multiple sisters in the room if that's po possible at all some sisters need uh, some students need counsel I prefer if they come in in twos and threes and they sit down and talk it's just better it's better that way these are small little guidelines, which you can implement them in your office. You can implement them at your home, you know. And what they do is they end up protecting you. They protect you, no one else. So when you are in private conversation with a sister, right, even text messaging, to some extent, even with employees and coworkers and things like that, it's better to have other people in the group text. I'm saying don't text at all, because sometimes it's a necessity. Immediate communications are important, but group text is better than individual text. You know, it's just better to just put somebody else in there, put two, three people in there. It's just all around, it keeps fitna away. It keeps fitna away. Why are we so protective? Because you could say, brother, we're Muslims, we don't have to be like that. Why are you, why are you like so worried about doing the wrong thing? Because Allah said this about people who are going to Firdaus. Because Allah said this about Ibadur Rahman. Because Allah said this, you know, even Yusuf alayhi salam's story, it's a prophet, right? It's not just any other person. And Allah said, had he not seen the proof, he would have desired her too. Lawla arra'a burhana rabbihi wa biha. He would have desired her too. The temptation is there. So you have to be respectful of that, you have to know who you are, and you cannot consider yourself above temptation. وَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ التَّقَى Don't consider yourself above it all. He knows better who has taqwa and who doesn't have taqwa. So these things are there for good reason.